What's up everyone? It's Scott Winroth and the Boho Trixie here and trying to make a video but we keep getting text messages and keeps cutting it off so whatever. Guess where we're at? we are at? We took a one night day trip to the great state of Michigan and we are in Lansing, Michigan. We Neither one of us have ever been to Lansing before so we thought we'd give it a try and of course we've got our Big B coffee because we're in the state of Michigan and we're going to check out the Mega Mall which is a big antique and collectible store open seven days a week from 11 a.m to 6 p.m it's open till 8 p.m on thursdays but we're not here we're here on a saturday and on google it says it's open at like 8 a.m and it's not open so we're in the car waiting for it to open no, but you just lied again it says it opens at six that's what he told me well whatever it, it said open it opened until early 6 p.m <laughs> As you will see, the mall had lots of cool sort of pop culture, vintage stuff. Mostly stuff from, I would say, the 80s and 90s versus antiques. There was a, a splattering of antiques throughout the mall, as you can see here. And and it kind of had a little something for everyone. I actually would recommend it. We I think we, we found a few things that we liked. What are they? Petoskey stones. You can find them on the beach in Michigan. They're like fossils. Like remotions. <laughs> Lots of tools and vintage tools if you're into that kind of stuff. I haven't seen this many Santa Bears since I worked in the store, but there was uh, about five or six of them throughout the entire store, and they were all fairly priced considering uh, I think they're more valuable than what they were priced. But I'll talk about that later. This is actually reminds me of my field days too. It's a uh, credit card stamping machine and I just thought it was fun to play with, trying to play with it with one hand. <laughs> Lots of uh, train, HO train stuff. And there's actually a lot of train stuff all through the Michigan stores we went to. Really cool. This was a really cool brake light and I wanted to buy it, but it was 95 bucks, a little bit out of my price range. And then finally I fell in love with a lot of cool stuff in this pewter cabinet that was actually on sale. But didn't catch anything. Didn't buy anything. I ended up getting a couple other things. And I thought this was cool seeing all the Fisher Price heads lined up like that. A little village of village, the Fisher Price people. And of course, like most antique malls, there's booths that are like Katon cases and typical sort of one case booth scenario with kind of vintage games. There's some Nintendo, Atari, PlayStation, all that stuff. Uh, lots of cool things to want to buy. My, you know, there was micro machines that you saw earlier. Here's some matchbox tools, just everything. I mean, they had a lot of cool stuff. I, I would recommend if you're in the area, of course. Uh, it depends on what you're looking for. Okay, everyone, we're here in Lansing and we just hit the Mega Mall. Actually, it was better than I thought it was going to be. I, I read some of the reviews online and I saw that it's kind of like a little bit of a flea market, a little bit of a junk store, and a little bit of a few antiques here and there. Um, I think it was definitely more vintage than antiques, which is actually good for us because, you know, although antiques are awesome, we kind of like our vintage, you know, 1970s, 80s, and 90s stuff when we were kids. So this is our haul video. What did you want to start first, Ted? Oh, yeah, sure. You sure you don't want to start with this? this well, okay. This so this is like, piece. this is the weirdest thing I've ever bought, probably. Eh, not really. But I got this guy, and you'd be like, what the heck did you buy that for? You probably could have stole one from the, the side of the road. You know it says SW on that side. I know, right? also it says my, it has my initials too, SW, probably for Southwest, but it's got my initials. And actually, my uncle's company, when he was alive, was Elgin Molded Plastics, and this is actually from his company. So, at least I think it is. It says EMP in Elgin, Illinois, so I assume it's Elgin Molded Plastics, Illinois. So, um, I had to buy that for family's sake. If anything, I'll show my future generation someday what what my uncle Ray did and of course you all know I'm a big Marshall Fields guy a Fields fan and I couldn't resist I saw they actually had like five of them and I almost bought all of them to try to resell them but I decided just to buy one this was the nicest one I got me a 1986 Santa Bear and I actually think I saw the Santa Bear when in 86 when I was three years old and uh, he was clean. He was half off because he's considered Christmas, which is great. And uh, yeah, I think I might just keep him for a little bit and maybe sell him at some point. But I have a bear just like that, but he's got a shirt on and he used to have a scarf and a hat. But I call him Big Bear and he's got a 
music box inside of him. This one doesn't, though. Yeah, so I just couldn't resist. And it was funny walking around the store with a big teddy bear in my arms. Everyone's looking at me funny, but I don't care. I got me a Santa bear. So that's all I got. What did you get? So I don't think I got anything vintage, but I got some patches that are each $2. I'm working on a jean jacket right now that is vintage by putting patches up and down all of the sleeves so that there are so you can't see the sleeve at all anymore it's all going to be covered in patches and it's taking me a while because like you know i only get patches here and there and i tried to get the same patch but I didn't have any of the same patches so these are going to be fillers and spaces where i need something and then of course i got one of these petoskey stones because even if I do find one someday on the beach on this side of, like in Michigan, on Lake Michigan, um, it's not going to look this nice and polished. So I'd like to have a, a polished one and a, and a one, maybe one that I find. Those are only, you can only find those on Lake Michigan and this side of the... I think so, yeah. This side of the ocean or lake? I think <laughs> this you side can lake. <laughs> more, more or less find them on, they're really, I think they're rarer on the Illinois side, but they're they're pretty mm -hmm. all over the place on the Michigan side. So only in Michigan, right? We'd find them. Only in pure Michigan. <laughs> pure Michigan. All right, so that's stop one. Holy cow, it's already, we already are already at noon today. So what's next? Where do you want to go next? We're going to Thrift Witch, which is a oddballs and oddity shop that has all kinds of different things, including weird and dark vintage pieces. And where's it at, you know? It's an old town, North we're, Lansing. Okay, so we're north of Lansing right now. We're in North Lansing, I think. So we're headed to Old Town. So stay tuned. And we made it to Old Town, the Old Town section of Lansing. And it is exactly what you would think. It's definitely a cute little main street, if you will, of an old town. Of course, it was a little cold the day we were there, as you can see. But it was fun to walk up and down the streets. It was really nice and sunny with the sun was out and Heather had a lot of fun sort of hitting these little niche uh, stores like Thrift Witch. Definitely more her type of style but they had lots of cool stuff to look at. Owls of course and they had some oddities if you will and some toys. Actually in the back of the store there was a whole toy, a toy section. I couldn't get any video in there because it was too tight and there was other people in there but Definitely, if you're into vintage, vintage toys and clothes, this is a place to hit. Then we headed up the street to Retro Metro, and this is kind of a vintage store with lots of clothes. Uh, definitely more of a female place, if you will, more for the women. And if you like to smoke weed, this guy had weed stuff everywhere. So uh, Michigan and Lansing was definitely a very 420-friendly town, if you know what I mean. I had to get this vintage hi-fi. I think my mom has this exact one in her basement. We'll have to pull it out. So we were walking down the old town here and, and we saw this sort of old bank and it looked really cool. And I looked inside and I realized it was a retrocade or a retro arcade. So we decided to pop in and have a drink and play some games. It was really fun. I highly, highly recommend it. I don't remember the name, but I will put it in the show notes. So be sure to check out the show notes. Lots of fun games to play. I was playing the uh, motor car game at the end. Took some pictures for Hev. And uh, just enjoyed the day. What's cool is that if you patron the restaurant, all the games are free. So definitely check it out. The next area we drove to was called REO Town, R-E-O, and actually I, I didn't know. I did some research when we got home, and this is really the birthplace of the modern automobile, commercial automobile in Michigan. So it was really cool to see this. This is really an old town area, in my opinion. It uh, wasn't as built up as the actual old town, but had some really cool stuff, including this uh, curated vintage store. If you're into high-end vintage and you needed some your interior decorating or something like that, I highly, highly recommend this store. They had lots of really cool stuff, uh, vintage, and of course some frou-frou, if you will. But it was it was really fun. Right next door to it, there was a little boutique called Thriftik that we hit, and this is really more of a traditional thrift store kind of junk store if you will lots of good prices the minute we walked in we were told they were having a big sale and didn't 
really find anything we wanted to buy. Keep in mind, we're on a trip, so we only have so much money and so much space. So we didn't pick up anything. But if you're into toys or just more your traditional thrift uh, antiques, this was a great place. And then we were hungry. We wanted some lunch. So we saw this really cool uh, barbecue restaurant right next door. Very delicious. Highly recommend it for some barbecue. Didn't think I'd find good barbecue in Lansing, but we sure did, and it was delicious. Having some barbecue? Yeah. Oh, wow. Look at that barbecue. Oh, wait. Get it. <laughs> get it. Get your own. Give me a bag. Some chip pulled chicken. We stuffed, our, stuffed ourselves and had a nice time sitting here at the view then we headed over to the west side of town because i wanted to hit this bookshop and it was a great bookshop i didn't take any video on the inside but i uh, highly recommend you for any of those books like me okay folks on the way home we hit a honey hole the burgess antique center in or near kalamazoo michigan had all kinds of stuff three maybe two floors of antiques uh, they had a main floor, they had a back area, and they had an upstairs that was full of all kinds of curated booths. This is an antique mall, so it's got your traditional sort of vendor set up with different booths and stuff like that. All kinds of, this was more antiques, if you will, but I thought they had some really cool antiques, more, more newer antiques, if that makes any sense. Not a lot of primitives. So advertising, Petroliana, railroad, transportation, you know, that kind of stuff. Stuff that I find, it's, if anything, interesting to look at. I definitely felt like a picker in here. They had all kinds of things that I wanted to buy and collect, including, of course, some macrame owls and stuff like that. This was at the end of our trip, so, of course, Heather and I were getting a little tired at this point, and we still had to drive home back to Chicago. So we decided to, to take it easy. We did end up finding a few things, which we'll talk about in a second. I saw the globe. It's like 25 we're getting it. 39.95. Virtual reality before it was virtual reality, right? So this is like the hall portion here. We picked up a few of these little games, the ball games, and then I picked up this uh, Trains Vintage Coloring Book. We had a we had a blast at the Burgess Antique Center. This could definitely be a trip in itself, but <laughs> highly recommend it if you're headed to Michigan. And then finally, the night before, actually we, we, the night we drove up to Michigan, we ended up going to the Nordic Fire Festival, which is a really cool outdoor festival dedicated to the Nordic life. Kind of reminded me of a Game of Thrones <laughs> event, if you will. With the the huts and I think those are called a, a yurt, if I believe, but they had yurts and they had tents with vendors and food and they had a mead hall with music. We didn't go in the mead hall. We got there kind of late just because it took us a little bit longer to get out of the Chicago than we thought, of course. It always is that way. But really cool to walk around. It was chilly that night, so I couldn't say I wanted to hang outside too much. But luckily inside the tents were heated. And we got to see some cool sort of Nordic vendors, if you will. And stuff you don't get to see every day, including furs and weapons and all the stuff you'd find at like a reenactment. I would consider this like a reenactment, if you will. Definitely would recommend going back if you're in the area or want to do something fun at the end of February when there's nothing ever to do. Be sure to check out the Nordic Fire Festival. You don't have to go, obviously, in Nordic gear. You can go and just have fun. But a great place to have some mead and see some friends. Watching this thrift and vintage with us video, be sure to like and subscribe if you like our content. We'll be sharing more Midwest adventures here really soon. Thanks for watching. <laughs> this is what I gotta deal with. <laughs> This is what I gotta deal with on a regular basis. We can't even do a video without laughing. It's just
Yeah, but phone's connected to the car.